Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to Mangaps. As I mentioned throughout the course of the morning, it is uh, one of the county's best kept secrets. In fact, I think if you're a railway anorak, it's possibly the nation's best kept secret. And I think it's fair to say this is second only to York Railway Museum for its exhibits. It was all part of one man's dream, uh, John Jolly, farmer, and decided, do you know, I quite like trains. He'll tell you the story in a moment. And, and he started this thing up probably 20, 30 years ago. Uh, I'll just do my little spiel on behalf of Caroline. We're just waiting for Peter Moore from Caroline as well, and then we'll let Rick get on with all the business. I've known John for, for a long time as a bit of a train anorak, to be honest, I will admit. Uh, and about five years ago, he said, oh, look what I've bought. And, and this thing was, I mean, it's, it's good. I'd love to be able to say, look what I've bought. Uh, he showed us this, and I thought radio uh, railway locomotives have names. And, and over the course of two or three years, we've just suggested that Radio Caroline might be an appropriate name. John, I'm sure, will explain why in just a moment. And then when we got to his agreement and painting and renovating the engine and naming it, and then we thought, well, we need somebody that someone's heard of to name it. Who do we know that's into Radio Caroline and railway locomotives? Couldn't find anybody, so we got Rick Wakeman. <laughs> I live up the road. <laughs> so we're, we're, I, I'm sure Rick, I know Rick is eager to talk, and I'm eager to hear him as well. But first of all, uh, let's just go. We're still waiting for Peter Moore. But let's start with John Jolly. So, John, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ray. So am I coming over? Yeah. 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 Um, well, as Ray said, there's a bit of history to all this. Um, the Mangats Railway started off actually by myself and James here, my son, um, 35 years ago, or 1987, that must be about 35 years ago, and, um, and it's built up to um, well, what you see today. And uh, the reason really why we decided to buy this Class 31 locomotive here, in fact we bought two of them while we were at it, the, the last two of them that were working for Network Rail, uh, was that they were originally built for the East Anglian services, this was uh, back in the days long before Dr Beeching when there was a lot more railways in East Anglia than there are today. Um, so that was back in the late 1950s, this one was built in 1959 um, and they uh, in fact followed, covered most of the railway services uh, in Eastern England and then spread all over the country uh, and eventually uh, this was the very last one uh, that was owned by and running uh, with a national railway organisation, Network Rail. <clears throat> now, the reason uh, that we thought that this would be a suitable one to name for Radio Caroline is that the loco itself was introduced in uh, early 1959. Uh, it uh, originally worked from the Stratford depot, um, a place which has now been completely wiped off the map and covered with the Olympic Park. Um, but after a few months at Stratford, it moved to Ipswich. Uh, and it was allocated to the Ipswich locomotive, the then allocate, uh, uh, Ipswich locomotive depot, right through the 1960s. Now, we all know what happened in the 1960s. Um, there was a great uh, social and cultural movement, I suppose, wasn't there? I mean, basically, it was pop music. Um, but in the early part of that time, there were really no opportunities for people to enjoy it as and when they wanted. And uh, eventually, an Irish entre entrepreneur called Rowan, Ronan Ro Rahilly uh, bought a boat, um, put it out in the North Sea, and started broadcasting as Radio Caroline, which upset the authorities no end. Um, they, uh, I mean, he was, as far as they were concerned, he was almost as unpopular as uh, President Putin is today, and similar sort of threats were made. Uh, but nevertheless, Caroline kept going, was joined by various other, uh, I don't know what you call them, competitors or um, uh, co-conspirators or what. Uh, but anyway, Caroline, after all these years, is still going, uh, still broadcasting from a boat, the Ross Revenge, uh, just north of here, out on the uh, uh, on the Blackwater Estuary. Um, the point is, of course, that uh, you can't keep a boat like that going to, uh, forever. Uh, rather like one of these railway engines, eventually they need a lot of money spent on them. And um, the uh, basic reason for all this really is to try and raise awareness of Radio Caroline and thereby uh, uh, get the wherewithal to do necessary repairs to uh, Ross Revenge and keep the uh, the whole thing going for another half century. 
at least. Um, the suggestion of uh, naming this locomotive, of course, came from our my friend, neighbour and fellow Essex boy, Ray. Um, and um, we thought it was an excellent idea, given the history of the locomotive and the history of Caroline, um, remembering that, uh, as I think we did discover when we uh, worked out that the engine has spent a lot of time at Ipswich, that uh, uh, by law of averages, it must often have hauled trains containing Radio Caroline staff and DJs, and they came out from London to Ipswich and Harwich to join the boat. So that's the connection. Right. Um, John, thank you. I mean, jo John, I'm, I'm not knocking at all, but John could give you the history of British Railways and we could still I, be I here. I can easily do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I knew that, John. <laughs> can I just quickly introduce Peter Moore from Radio Caroline? And, and Peter, if you'd like to go and grab the microphone, and, and then Rick, we'll, uh, we, we keep the star till the end, you see. But, uh, really? Who's that? <laughs> he hasn't got here yet. <laughs> oh! oh. I have to stand up on account I'm, I'm a bit short. Um, don't have much to say. Thank you very much for turning up. I've never seen such a crowd, really. I was worrying there'd be about three cars, and I feel terribly embarrassed. But you're mob-handed, so it's very kind of you. Um, what encourages me about this museum is I've only got one ship and one project which needs repairing although it's a, a, a daunting task. But when I see what John's achieved, it makes me think that what we want to do must surely be possible. So enjoy the afternoon, enjoy the nameplate, and take lots of photos and show it around. Uh, have a train ride in a minute behind this expert train driver. Um, <laughs> but. He'll explain himself very well. John's explained himself very well, so you don't really need me. But enjoy the afternoon, and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. It's Peter Moore. Right, just a couple more words before Rick takes over. Uh, we've got a locomotive. We've got an idea. We've got agreement, which nowadays is hard to find in any organisation. Uh, and and we've got nameplates. So all we needed was somebody to name the thing. And I was fortunate enough to interview Rick from my studio, which sounds very glamorous, but it's the back of my garage earlier in the year. And I thought, I can find a like-minded friend here. And I just sort of snuck in, would you be interested in perhaps helping Caroline? Right now? Did, yes, yes, yes. And, and then I took a chance one Monday morning and fired off an email. I thought, I'm not gonna get an answer to this. Within five minutes of my email saying, Rick, got a little idea. Yes, that was all we needed. Or, or was he talking about the band? I'm not sure. <laughs> Rick Waitman, Probably thank one you. One of the two, thanks. Um, yeah, like many of you here, I'm sure there might be one or two of you here bordering on my age, but not many of you looking around. Um, when, I was a, when I was a kid, the, the big things that happened for me were the railways. Um, I was born in 1949, so 50s was all steam engines, and then started to become diesels, and then we had the dreadful Dr. Beeching, who... It's a shame, really, that he's not on the track because we could run over the bugger. Um, who did so much damage. But that's by the by. The by. I mean, I love the track. It was glory days of train spotting. I used to love going to my holidays with train spotting. Loved it. Um, and at the same time, then, in, as you come to the early 60s, mid 60s, suddenly, for us kids, there was nothing musically. Uh, we had the light programme on the radio. Anybody remember the light programme? Yeah. yeah. Sing something simple. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Uh, and that, that was all we, all, all we had. And uh, uh, forces, family favourites. And uh, it was dreadful. And then suddenly along came Radio Caroline, Radio London and a few others. And there's the music that we loved. And, uh, and not just us, but people older than us. We suddenly had music to go with all of the, the changes that were going on. Uh, it was just such a fantastic time. And... Uh, Oh, like all of us, we were just addicted to Caroline. There's never been anything like it since. Uh, and with no disrespect to, what's, what are the BBC ones called? One, Radio One, Two. Uh, I mean, the, the Six Five Special, I remember that, yeah. And thank your lucky stars, on there, and ready, steady, go. God, blimey. Anyway, uh, radio, radio One, yeah, they, they tried to copy the Pirates, but it, uh, and, and it, it sort of worked to a certain extent, but to me it didn't have that wonderful magic of the Pirates. It really didn't. I got to know 
uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, a load of the, of, of the, of the jocks off of the boats. Um, and I take my hat off to them, not just for the great work they did, but for managing to stand upright. I mean, uh, they, they automatically all moved like this when they got off the boats. None of them ever stood still. Um, trains, love them. I love it. I, I, uh, I took a quick little story. I, I was asked uh, about 20 years ago if I would turn on the lights at Minehead. And I went, no. It's a long way from me. I, live, I was living in Norfolk at the time. I'm in Suffolk now. And I said, no, it's too, just too, that's too far. And they said, well, um, I tell you what, you can have a ride on the, on the steam trains down there. I said, you're getting close. And they said, how about if you come down two days before and we do you a course and teach you to drive? I said, I always wanted to turn the lights on. <laughs> so I went down, and that's where I learned to drive steam engines, which was, I, I, uh, I, I cannot tell you the, the for if, if, do you do lessons down here for people on trains? Do you do that? You, I tell you what, one of the greatest presents you can give somebody is to, to, to buy some lessons to drive. It is phenomenal. I can't, I can't put into words how great it is. So well, anyway, cut a long story short, with my association with Caroline and uh, with radio and with my love of trains and uh, I've been involved at Barrow Hill, you know Barrow Hill? Yeah, I've done some stuff up there. We did concerts up at Barrow Hill. Great fun. Um, when I got the, the, the call, which was like, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I did have something else in for the day, believe it or not. Um, but I can see the mother-in-law any time, so it wasn't really too much, of a, too much of a choice. So it's a pleasure to be here. I just hope they've uh, spelt the name right. Um, do I undo it from this end? Oh, you're the professional at doing that. Cool, fly me. Oh. Is it a pull? I bet you can't guess what it's called. Ready? On behalf of Radio Carolina and on behalf of Mendaps, the Railway Museum, I declare this train as Radio Caroline. Yeah, that's fantastic. Spelt correctly as well. Look at that. It's brilliant, isn't it? I'll give you that. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself on the train and uh, have a good look around. Book some lessons. <laughs> Just a quick word as well before we move on to the next exciting bit. I ought to just say that the magnificent state of this loco is thanks to some of our volunteers, uh, particularly to Dave Brennan, uh, who some months ago decided that it would be a good idea to get it repainted. It was in a horrible shade of rather dirty yellow previously. And uh, so we've repainted it, or Dave and his friends have repainted it in pretty much the condition that it was in in the 1970s, uh, under British Rail. So there we are. Well done, Dave, Tim, Andy, and, and company. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And, and I think the plan now is for Rick just to be shown what he's got to do, you know, find out where neutral is, fire it up, and off he goes. Uh, and uh, again, take your photographs. Uh, please, uh, it is wise to keep off of railway tracks when there are railway locomotives around. But Rick, on behalf of Caroline, thank you very much. Thank you. Big round of applause for Rick. Thank you.
The next scheduled departure from Mangaps Railway Museum is the Rick Wakeman Special, it would seem, to the end of the track and possibly back again. Avoid the platform edge, thank you. Train about to depart. We're not sure about the driver. Please stand back from the platform edge. Mangaps, this is Mangaps, I've always wanted to do that. here by Rick Wakeman of course, legendary prog rock artist and railway enthusiast as well here at Mangaps Railway Museum in Burnham on Crouch. And uh, Rick, you're here today, or you've already done it, you've unveiled the new locomotive named Radio Caroline. Uh, first of all, Radio Caroline, how much has that meant to you? How much has Pirate Radio meant to you? Because I heard you briefly mention it in your speech a bit earlier on. I'm, I'm quite interested to know a bit more. Well, we, we wouldn't have a music industry um, today if it wasn't for the Pirate Radio and Radio Caroline in, really in particular, which was, uh, uh, shall we say, the market leader in, in every respect. Um, we just wouldn't be here. They, they forced the government's hand to give people what they wanted, um, which is something that governments even up to today haven't learnt the lesson. They still don't give people what they want. They give people what they think they want, um, which is... Uh, very much like watching the Yes Minister, you know. They, they, uh, so I'm, I'm so thankful to Radio Caroline, I'm, and I'm so grateful for for it for it carrying on, you know, for uh, for it st still existing and uh, and keeping alive all the great memories and what it what it did. It's uh, it was crucial to us as musicians in the early days. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we because uh, apart from Radio Luxembourg, we didn't have anything. Yeah. We we had nothing. You know, um, you know, it, it, very hard to get prog rock played on played on, on sing something simple and yeah, uh, you know it didn't yeah. really exist very much. So Im immensely important. And <clears throat> and I do have a great love of trains. I must admit, I was brought up in that era of steam and then steam changing to to diesel um, and. And well, now these days where it's paper mache, but it was, it was just 
it was just fantastic. So they, it was a great revolutionary period after the war in, in the uh, <coughs> in the sixties. Uh, of things were changing because um, people my age and in, in their teens and late teens were sort of getting a bit fed up with being told that everything's horrible. Yeah, you know, we were fed up with it. Um, and I remember uh, certain things happening. I can remember in the in the late fifties, fifty seven, fifty six. Uh, so I had a great love of cars, still have, and suddenly appeared this car, it looked like an American car, it was a Vauxhall, Vauxhall Cresta, and I went, wow, and the most amazing thing, well, it was two-tone colour, oh, really? and up until then everything had been grey, grey uh, TV was pathetic, um, it was grey, your TV took a year and a half to warm up, and by the time it had warmed up it was time to turn it off, yes. uh, a radio was the same, that had to, had to warm up. Um, the signal was bad, and you say, "Oh, this can't go on like this." This is, you know, they had better communication in the war, and and I think a lot of us, us kids, we'd had enough of it all, but we needed a catalyst to, to fire it, and uh, pirate radio was the catalyst. Absolutely, and yeah. that was absolutely what what did it, and uh, whatever way, <clears throat> as I said, the postmaster general, because they used to run the radio licenses, whatever. Uh, what, whatever rubbish they came up with, I'd say, we're going to close them all down, we're going to sink them, we'll send the Navy out to bomb them out the water, and anybody who listens, it's illegal and you'll go to prison. You know what? I'll, you know, grow up. Yeah. And uh, in the end, they backed down, they had to back down and run with it, um, and then tried to turn it into, it was all our idea in the first place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot to, a lot to thank um, Pirate Radio for, a lot to thank. Definitely. I mean, my personal view, would, would I, instead of BBC, I'd have been happy to let the BBC wallow along as it was, and, and but to bring all of the pirate stations into port, make them legal, and let them carry on doing what they're doing. There was a certain romance about the, about the pirates, there really was. Something special. Oh, yeah. And they were playing these bands <coughs> and artists that no one else was playing, really, so the Beatles and the Stones, the Who, bands like that, the yeah. rock and roll breakthroughs. They were obviously creating something of their own, this revolution. Which, Absolutely. Which I suppose would have been an influence on you and, and the people coming around. There's influence on everybody. Room. I mean, you're, you're quite right. I mean, the, uh, I mean, record companies, pirate station, it, that was manna from heaven. I mean, because you couldn't get anything played. It, you know, it, 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 it was still the days of the crooners and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so suddenly uh, the pirates were playing all the stuff that we wanted to hear and the government tried to stop the records getting to them i mean how are you going to stop that it was ridiculous so uh, it was uh, it was so it was so pathetic um and and the other great thing of course was we won absolutely yeah and that is one of the few occasions in history where power of the people has actually won yeah yeah, it's incredible. Were there any of those bands and artists um, a, a significant influence on you becoming a musician that you heard on the pirate stations, or was it something just before well, that? I, well, I was always a musician really from the age of five. I never did anything else. Uh, my dad was a piano player, and I did. And I was in, I was in my first band in when I was eleven. Right. Uh, so it's all I ever did. But yeah, of course, you bands that you, you loved. Everybody had favourite bands. I mean, the Beatles were an influence on everybody. The Who. I yeah. just adored the Who, fantastic. and it was so fantastic in in later years where they became really good friends. Yeah. That was that was a real winner. So yeah, I mean there were a lot of bands that were really good, and and there started to be the separation uh, of uh, of what we call singles bands and album bands. Yeah. You either made singles or you made albums. Very few crossed over. Yeah. Very very few uh, successfully. Um, uh, I ended up going really down the album route. Because every time I tried to write a single, it ended up as 19 minutes long. Uh, so that f that failed. That, in fact, I had a conversation once with Elton John, and uh, uh, yeah, I remember talking to El Elton John, and he, he said he really wanted to write a big long piece, right. and I said I really want to write a single, and so we both sort of. I said well, I'm going to have a go. And he said Yeah, I, I am as well, and we met up a little while later at something, and I said. How did you get on? He said, I started doing this big epic. I had this idea of this big epic. I said, how did it go? He said, I kept on and on and on. He said, finished it and I was really pleased. He said, and, 
and I, I timed it and it was three minutes 22 <laughs> seconds and I said yeah I had a similar thing I tried to write a single I said the best I could come out with was about 11 and a half <laughs> minutes he said best we stick at what we're good at there you go yeah that's fantastic I mean Elton John's of course a huge name there you've had I suppose the privilege of working with so many huge names I mean yeah I've been lucky a lot of David Bowie stuff yeah um, I, I mean I could list so many to be fair but is there anyone in particular all these years later I mean, if you don't mind me saying that yeah several <laughs> decades later after working with these huge names is there anyone that stands out you think now wow you know I, I got to work with them or, or you're proud of a piece of work maybe certainly David Bowie was yeah. amazing to work with I mean we were friends for uh, quite a few years in fact we were neighbours when we both lived out in Switzerland um, so we used to see each other a lot and meet up in a little club in Montreux called the Museum Club where we used to put the world to rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David was, was great. I met him in 1968 and then we did Space Oddity in 1969 and in the same year in, the, uh, in 1970 did some tracks off of his David Bowie album which was Wild Eyed Boy from, Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud and Memory of a Free Festival and a few others and then did Hunky Dory album with him mm. with That's Life on Mars and Changes and things which was amazing to, to do and then I did uh, which is not that well not, I did uh, some, a couple of tracks on the Ziggy oh really did you but then I got the chance to either join Spiders from Mars or Yes and I chose Yes so I didn't only did that one bit on on, on Ziggy which was which yeah. was great fun and then we reunited Many years later, in I say many years, in the eighties, uh, when he was doing Absolute Beginners, oh, right. and he called me up and said, "Hey, do you fancy coming and doing? I want some Rachmaninoff-style piano on Rachman on uh, on uh, Absolute Beginners. Do you fancy doing it for old times?" So I went, "Yeah." Uh, so I went on to a studio in Latimer Road in in uh, in, in the rough part of Kensington, and we met up. I think it took ten minutes to do the piano, and we spent about six hours in the pub. Wow. reminiscing which was which was great fun that's amazing yeah so I mean obviously we could sit here for I'm sure hours probably days talking about yeah. the fantastic people you worked with you mentioned Cat Stevens as well but um, one of your other passions other than music as we've sort of realized today is uh, your passion for locomotives and trains so yeah that begin, really. well that that's that that's, that's it all goes down to when you were a kid I mean I was a kid when uh, there were stations everywhere steam trains everywhere yeah and uh, my grandma lived in in uh, Labrock Grove and I used to go by tube train similar to one we're sitting in now to Hammersmith from Sudbury Hill cross the road to one of the bigger ones one of the bigger trains um, like the one you probably can't see out the window here and and that ran uh, to Latimer Road where I got off walked to my grands but then um, I used to get back on the train and go to Paddington and at Paddington, uh, I get a penny platform ticket, right. uh, old penny platform ticket, uh, with with hundreds, and I mean hundreds of other kids, all with our, our numbers, books of numbers, the train numbers, yeah. and then you just you write you you you'd, you'd write and copy your numbers in and and copy them off, and and it was good days. Some of the tank engine drivers, if they got to know you, you they'd let you stand on the on the side on the footplate when they went up and down the platform oh, it was just Fantastic. wonderful and it was it was just it was just brilliant it was uh oh it was just just great and then i went to school on the on the push and pull two carriages and an engine uh from greenford to Ealing broadway which uh, uh there it is. oh yeah, there it is it's just it's just come uh, which was a steam engine uh and i used to go on that and then they changed that to uh, a, a diesel, uh, two carriages diesel with an uh, inbuilt engine, of which there is one here, yeah. uh, which was just great. I loved, I loved all that. It was something special. Um, and then you, if you go on holiday, you go down to to Devon, on the trains where they had the the carriage down the 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 the, uh, the corridor down the the side, and then you went into the little compartments. Uh, it was it was called proper trains. Yeah it was yeah. really really good and I've always had a love of trains this is going to sound really bizarre I, ha I have a friend um, who owns the Trans-Siberian Railway right, in yeah. Russia he's, wow. a, he's a 
Great, don't look at me like that. It's, yeah. He's a really close friend. I can't go and see him at the moment for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, but um, Is his name Vladimir? Uh, sorry. Is his name Vladimir? <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, it's not. He's an oligarch. I believe. He's a great, and uh, he knows my love of love of trains. And uh, my wife and I, even though we, we've been together 22, 22 years, but we, we we've never had a honeymoon. And so he's he's gonna. He, he said. I, I do your honeymoon on the, I give you a carriage on the Siberian Express. Yeah, wow. uh, so we're going to do that, hopefully once all the conflict and what, what's going on is, is, is over. Um, but he, uh, here's one for you, he knows my love of trade. I was over, before all the conflicts and problems started, I was overseeing him in uh, in Moscow and he, he said, uh, Rick, he said, um, I. I am also a sponsor of one of the big orchestras here. I said, okay. He said, would you like to do a piano concert with, uh, with the orchestra? I said, I'd love to do that. He said, uh, I've got a very good idea of where we can do this. I said, oh, okay. He did. It was in the Moscow railway station. Oh, wow. Now they're so opulent. I'm sure you've seen pictures of how opulent they look. Yeah. So he basically rerouted all the passages where they had to walk and set the orchestra up and the grand piano in the in the Moscow railway station and it's, it was just it was just fantastic one of the kind, it yeah. was really really good um yeah i've i've had an interest in track i was out in paraguay paraguay trains are interesting because a lot of them are owned by a family by a father and the wife and the kids and they run the train and they will do little routes and they'll take anything from passengers to animals to, to cargo to to whatever yeah. uh, it's quite fantastic so uh, I went on a couple of those you know it's um uh, it, it's just it's fascinating it's it's I mean when you consider they're dirty they're filthy they're smoky but they're romantic yeah there's something yeah. romantic about uh, train uh the big diesels when they changed over because they're so big and, and powerful, there is a, 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 there is an element of romance about them. Now, I'm afraid the mod the modern day trains. Uh, I, I made a rude remark. Oh, they all look like they're made of paper mache, <laughs> yeah. uh, which they, you know, they're, they're you know, not, they're, not, they're not quite special, are they? They're not quite as no. romantic as you say. No, I mean that's why. And you think they'd learn a bit, but it's, which is why when they the Orient Express runs, which I know is not the engine anymore, it's a, but the carriages and they run. You know, you can't get a ticket for love nor money, no, no. because that's what people want. They want more of it. They want those uh, those special things, yeah. you know. And some countries are still do it. Italy, I mean, I came recently. Well, it wasn't from. I came from Switzerland. From um, I, I went from where did I come from? Uh, Zurich, I think it was. Oh, okay. And I came on the train uh, down to Milan, uh, and. It was like Art Deco coaches, mm. not expensive, nice meal. It was just really, you go, why can't we do this? Yeah. Yeah. And the only people who do it are the Heritage Railways and, and they do their meals and their trips. You know, if you've, if you've got things like radio, if you've got things like transport, it's got to be run by people who have a passion for it. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise it's, it's, it's one of my reasons why I think the record industry has collapsed a lot because it's not run by people who are passionate about records and passionate about how they're made and produced. Yeah, definitely. You know, if you, you're going to have everything run by accountants and businessmen and lawyers, you take the you take the passion and the romance out out of these things, and what are you left with? Exactly. No, it's a very good point. But obviously, your passion for for locomotives and I suppose well, definitely music, but yeah. radio as well, has has lasted through until today as well. And of course, now you've got, I'm sure, your favourite locomotive as well, the radio. The Caroline, yeah, that How is much that. Was it meant to come here today? To that was it? that was brilliant to 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 see that, and uh, you know, it's it just begs the question. Why didn't anybody think of it before? That includes me. I didn't think of it. It'll be, it it's it's so it's so lovely. I mean, uh, I mean, I know I don't know what you, you'd ever be allowed to. It'd be, it'd be great to, to to maybe do a one-off broadcast from here or something. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm sure you could get a. There's ways you get licenses or whatever it is to do it. Yeah. But listen, John, your MP, I'm sure would help you get that. Anyway, yeah. you know, it, it's it's a. Uh, 
people like things a little bit different. I mean, okay, you've got a, a great plaque, radio car on, on the side of an old diesel electric train, which has been beautifully restored. Mm. You saw how many people there were on the platform. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds. They've come because this is a bit of romance for a lot of those people out there. This has brought back memories yeah. that have been taken away that should never have been taken away. And I take my hat off to John Jolly here and, and, and people at Barrow and people at, at some of the other Heritage Railways, Minehead and others, that keep this all, all alive. And it's about time central government realise what the hell they've got. Yeah. There should be a department that look at, look at all of these, her, what I call heritage type things, yeah. um, and, you know, and help, to, help to care for them because they're, they're massive for people to come. I don't yeah. think either, either of us could say anything really that, that trumps what you've just said. I think that sums it up fantastically. And uh, obviously you've seen the, the people coming up to you and of course us oh, as well. People are nice. grateful for you being here. So um, yeah, we do. I think some of them are just uh, grateful I'm alive. I mean, well, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't saying that. Rick. No, that's right. That. But no, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Bless today. you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Rick.